Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Warforged. And today I just wanted to give some first impressions. Really looking at the mechanics, the synergy, the power. We're still likely missing one mechanic. Uh, all of the new factions this year that have dropped. So Tau's Sisters of Battle um, and now the Imperial Guard have had three different mechanics. So we're really only going off of two out of three today. Kind of want to talk about the synergy we're already seeing uh, with, uh, in particular, I would say vehicles and infantry. Um, and then broadly talk about the power level because we do have a couple legendaries to talk about. Um, and we could kind of start to make some guesses as to where the Imperial Guard, uh, the Astra Militarum are going to be in terms of their presence, I think, in the meta. Um, it, it is early days, but I figured we'd get a little bit of speculating going there um, because Harry and I will be recording our Card Talk episode covering, um, in a new format, the Imperial Guard release. So that'll be dropping likely Thursday night for me. So if you're in the EU or you're, you're east of the U.S., uh, that may be coming to you more like Friday morning. Um, but we're excited to do that. And before we were able to record that, I just figured I'd put something out there just kind of uh, continuing to look at uh, what we have to look forward to when it comes to the Imperial Guard. Um, we had some really sweet reveals today from uh, Mr. Page, and uh, those are going to be included in this video. So as of this release, it is current for all of the reveals. Um, and we're not going through every card, but we're just going to really focus on what we think this faction is doing. And I think largely how well do we think it's doing it. Um, if you're new to the channel, thank you for checking everything out. We had a ton of support on the reveal video. It was really, really quite incredible. Um, so feel free to stick around. If this is uh, just getting more of what you already love. So let's get into it. First things first. Let's talk mechanics and I will say this is always where I'm most excited because mechanics give you a, a bit of a sense of the identity of the faction I'm always looking for mechanics that feel like very unique or very different um, for what the game's already kind of modeled around or provided or iterated on I will say these two mechanics are very much um, an innovation on something we've already seen so we can actually get a pretty decent sense of how these may play. Of course, we don't know what the support cards are, and I think that we will talk about that for, for a little bit today. But there may be other things that allow for models of mechanics that function poorly before to function better. And I think there's a good chance of that, mainly because if we just dive into duty here, right? Um, <laughs> pun not intended. Uh, this is essentially a one-time uh, prey mechanic, right, that you can then, we know that there's a new Warlord, and we'll talk about that a little bit today, because we've only seen one so far, which was very fun to reveal, um, that duty can, in fact, be re-triggered, it can happen multiple times, um, but we've seen this before, right, with prey, we've seen the ability to, uh, if something has flank and prey, it can use its prey ability, uh, if it doesn't, you got to wait for the following turn, and that prey ability is weighted around the fact that maybe you could repeatably do it. So prey effects in general, I would say, released very, very weak. Uh, because if you got like, you know, essentially just like crazy value over and over and over again. Um, but it turns out prey was just very weak because this game is based around tempo. It's based around being able to take out your opponent's units and kind of like clear the board and such. Um, so having an effect that requires the unit to live until the next turn is a real liability. Um, so duty is doing a very similar thing where it's like, okay, this thing needs to live till next turn in order to use its duty ability, or I have to give it flank the turn it hits to get that value. Um, again, I'm kind of giving EG the credit here that they have made this iteration and then it's an improved version of something we've already seen. So I'm willing to say that Duty and Regiment, which we'll get into as well, are better than we would know them from previous iterations. But that doesn't mean that they're going to be the best, right? That doesn't mean that the mechanics are going to be, um, you know, incredibly powerful. Like I think the Tau, for instance, was a great example of mechanics that on release were very, very strong. Um, Marker Light 
long range um, really stick out to me in, in particular. Um, so Duty, I think, will operate similarly to Prey. Maybe it's a little bit souped up because it's technically only supposed to be one activation. So there, there kind of has to be more bang for your buck, if you will, in the actual activation. It is also situational, right? Because you have to have a legal attack target. And we haven't seen any cards with fast. So it's not like you can drop a troop, you know, um, you know, potentially with flank and get the value out of that duty ability because it has to have a legal attack target, which you then select duty instead, right? It's going to be this little icon, I imagine, that pops up right in between melee and ranged attack, and you'll be able to choose it once. Um, so I think... Some of the abilities have been powerful. We'll look at some today. Um, I'm still a little skeptical of how good it's going to be. I guess my cat is too. Whenever I record these videos, she has to weigh in. Um, so yeah, I, I think you really want the duty abilities to have quite a big impact um, before like I'm going to sign off really on those cards. Um, and Regiment, I feel like is similar, right? So... Uh, how it reads is when another unit makes a ranged attack, gain X effect. And the important piece here, especially for you Magic players, you know this, when it says another unit, that does not include the unit itself. Meaning, your Warlord obviously is another unit, so you'll get a trigger out of that. That's the floor, right? You play, you plop that Medic down, uh, you attack ranged attack in particular with your Warlord, heal one to a friendly unit, uh, unit in this case for the medic so that's going to heal your warlord for getting that attack it's fine it's like a nice little bit of, of value the problem again with things like mob as we've seen and there are pretty ma many just mob cards that are not used that that are just not the best thing that the orcs can be doing um, because that's for melee instead of ranged um, it is just that it needs a little bit of support right like ideally you would have multiple units that could allow your regiment to be triggered so flanking units with regiment are going to have an inherent synergy, right? Because you play like a cheap medic, and then you play like a four cost, five cost flanker on energy six, seven. Great. You get two heals from that regiment troop um, just for existing on the board because you've attacked with your flanker with ranged attack and you've attacked with your warlord. Um, I think you just want to be on the lookout for regiment uh, triggers that are actually impactful. Same with duty, right? Because they do require some level of setup, some level of your opponent not really interacting with you well, um, then then you can get some sort of value. So again, really what we're kind of talking about with all of this stuff is conditions. Conditions for these things to be good. And I'm willing to bet that just from a design standpoint, the Imperial Guard are a little bit more fleshed out than, you know, Sisters of Battle as a counterpart. Um, and, and maybe they're somewhere a little bit closer to Tau in terms of power level that they're going to kind of hit the scene and, and do what they're supposed, supposed to do, so to speak, because the Sisters of Battle really struggle with that for multiple seasons. Um, so I, I'm just kind of I'm tipping my hand here a little bit in this video before we've even looked at cards. But I, I think that from a design standpoint, I feel like they've learned a lot from things like Duty, things like Mob. Um, or and pray, I guess, rather in this example, um, and that I'm I'm willing to give a little bit of faith that they will be a little bit better than their their previous counterparts, you know, um, and where these abilities come from. Um, so if the supports there, and the impact of these abilities is is noticeable, and the conditions aren't that hard to create, then they should be pretty good. Uh, I'm really curious to see what this third mechanic is. Um, I don't think we're going to be talking about it until I have our card talk episode on Thursday. Um, but I, I'm really just hoping that um, there's something a little bit more unique that we're going to see uh, for the Astro Militar. But that's enough about mechanics. You, you can tell. As I could just talk about this all day. So let's talk about um, two, two main card types today, which is going to be vehicles. Um, and then we're going to talk about infantry, and in general, we're going to talk about the support for both. Um, that is the crux of many factions, is what are their vehicles doing, what are their infantries doing, um, and then what are some of the spells or stratagems, rather, like the support cards, things like that. 
So we have a bit of a range here, and we, we don't have a legendary vehicle to talk about here. Um, but we do have, we've got a common couple rares and an epic. Um, Scout Sentinel on four energy, having camouflage and a duty ability that's that's pretty solid, like drawing two cards is, is nice. Um, it's got a good stat line for, um, you know, making your opponent have to sink usually two attacks in to clear it. Um, but then you're, you're left with nothing, right? So it's not like you're getting a codex trigger here and maybe buffing something you played the turn before. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have armor, it doesn't have stealth, right? Camo allows for it not to die to a stratagem, but being at five health on four energy is, is not that hard to clear. Um, I feel like with Scout Sentinel, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to actually get to use the duty ability. Um, in the late game, maybe, if you, you got some protection for it, we'll be looking at some Vanguard cards today that got revealed, um, which, which are pretty spicy. Um, but, uh, you know, as a standalone card, it's, it's nothing crazy. Um, the Lehman Rust Vanquisher, we also have the Lehman Rust Tank, uh, definitely does, does a lot if you can do it, right? And, and it's big stats. Um, I think what the Lehman Rust Vanquisher is going to benefit from is the support cards that we'll talk about. It's kind of just a big problem that you drop on the board. And if you don't answer it, it's probably going to swing the match pretty hard into your favor. Um, but also, if they can ignore it, if they have hard removal, it does nothing. Um, so it's it's kind of the classic, like, if you can reliably maybe use this duty ability, that makes the card go up in value, certainly. Um, or if you can cheapen its cost, it's it's going to be a scarier threat that come, that hits the board earlier. Um, so that's that's kind of important. Same thing with Lehman Russ. Um, interestingly, it's got a regiment ability, right? They both have armor. They're both pretty chunky. Um, and it has deal two damage to a random enemy. So if you're able to set up, uh, you know, a, a trooper or, or, I mean, it's really like a troop and your warlord, um, you're going to get some decent value when this hits the board. It's not like that big of a problem in the sense that it's not hitting near, like as, as hard as the... Uh, Vanquisher with its duty ability, but Regiment is obviously repeatable, and, and duty is not necessarily repeatable. Um, so I, I feel like both tanks will probably pull their weight if there's enough um, vehicle support. Rogaldorn tank, um, honestly, I haven't read this card too much. Right, it was the, it's got two armor, nine health, nine energy, definitely a scary nine drop, um, of which there are not many in the game. It's got Vanguard, which makes sense. Uh, that that gives it inherent value and then it's got regiment give uh plus range to your units plus one range to your units this turn so this this is doing what a nine drop has to do to be relevant and that's present basically a threat that is going to win the game affect the board which it does on vanguard and it affects the board on regiment right so you can envision uh a later later stages in the game where you've got maybe a unit lying around plus the rogodorn tank both your warlord and your unit attack um then uh you're getting plus one uh after that first attack and then you get plus two after that second attack i will say the regiment on rogodorn tank is pretty lackluster um unless you're like very far ahead so i don't i don't think that's doing a whole ton for you but it's got vanguard and it's got armor too and it's got nine health so unless you have hard removal this thing's not gonna die it's going to be a problem uh and then it's going to attack you back for nine and then start buffing whatever else you play this turn so i do think that the tanks we've seen so far with uh russ and the rogal dorn um are pretty scary and i think if there is anything akin to what we saw to pre-nerf ultramarines um these things are going to be a problem there is a little bit more support i will say even with gsc they have the card that deals uh, more damage to something with armor. Um, and uh, even even the Eldar actually have access to that a little bit, although uh, I'm not sure how how many decks can really afford to play that um, that 7 energy vehicle. Um, the Fire Prism. There, there we go. I knew it was in my brain. Just just had to struggle a little bit. Um, I, so, yeah. So, it's these vehicles, I think, are looking on the stronger side. I will say the game feels like it gets faster and faster, and with combo decks that can go really wide and low to the ground, these tanks are not going to do anything to them. 
Um, but we've also seen quite a bit of AoE coming out of the set so far. And I think that's a way of kind of compensating and getting to the late game. Um, so it's possible that they just have enough tools that these tanks are going to hit the board in, in, you know, and you're not going to be that far behind. And then you have a lot of problems to deal with. So we'll see how it goes. But I think, um, the Rogal Dorn tank, I think we'll, we'll see play. And I, I'd be surprised. I think the Lehman Rust tank being at seven energy and that you can cheapen it with the card we're going to talk about. Maybe that will actually see a little bit more play. Lehman Rust Vanquisher you know, has less upfront value unless you're triggering that duty card. And we haven't seen anything specific with like recharging um, specifically vehicles. We do have the recharge on a unit from uh, the, the Commissar Warlord that I revealed. So there is that, um, but you can't give it flank because it's not an infantry. So there, there's some piece missing here uh, to maybe make Lehman Russ as like incredible as it could be. And maybe that's for a good reason. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So what are some of the support cards for the vehicles? Um, Tech Priest Engine Seer. I was, I was kind of hoping we would, we would see something like this. So that was really exciting. 4 Energy 534. So um, very easy to clear, right? So this has got to have a lot of upfront value. It's got Regiment Heal 2 to a friendly vehicle. Don't know how relevant that's going to be. Again, you have to have a vehicle that... Uh, I guess you're playing this Tech Priest later in the game right because the vehicles we're seeing are are pretty uh huge in terms of the energy cost so that's whatever but the duty ability i think is much more relevant right lower the cost of all vehicles in your hand and deck by one right so we're literally talking about um the vehicle supremacy card from the ultramarines put onto a unit right but you have to be able to give flank to this unit which is infantry so looking at you commissar uh, Dankler, um, where you can you can essentially get this synergy where you play like a couple of infantries that that serve a good purpose, um, that help enable your vehicle synergies. It's very similar. I think there's a lot of crossover between your ultramarines in in this way, um, and so this this is offering quite a bit of value if you can get that duty trigger instantly. It does not matter if you can't do that. So I think Commissar and the Tech Priest Engine Seer are going to be holding hands and, and very happily together um, to drop the cost of your vehicles by one. So let, let's just look at that, right? So Rogaldorn tank goes down to eight. Lehman Rust tank goes down to six. Uh, Lehman Rust Vanquisher, I, I should say Vanquisher versus the, the regular, um, goes down to seven. And that's, that's a big difference, right? So uh, dropping a seven or eight health unit with armor that has some uh, effect past its, its body is a scary thought. So I think the ideal curve for the vehicle decks are going to be Tech Priest on four or five, giving it flank through Commissar or through some other uh, ability, get that value, right? And so it's going to lower it in your hand, which is awesome. And then lowering your deck means your draws are, are juiced as well. And then <laughs> we've got another card that is pretty scary, full throttle. The next vehicle you play this turn costs two less so that that's really going to be scary right so on so it's what is it on six energy you go down to five and you can reduce lehman ross down to five so um right so it's essentially it's ramping you one so on five you can play lehman ross uh, uh regular tank the, i'll just call it the regular on on uh what is it on or sorry on six energy and on 7 energy, you can play Vanquisher. But all of that gets knocked down again, right, when you combine it with, uh, went to the rough side, Tech Priest. So I think definitely the curve of going, like, Tech Priest into full throttle, play your first tank on 5 energy, then your second tank on 6 energy, potentially another on 7. Um, that is going to be the scariest start. Uh, definitely the highest high roll for the vehicle deck. And if you go... The regular tank into the Vanquisher into Rogaldorn. That's probably enough, um, and and we'll see if there are other cheaper vehicles. I, I'm sure we'll see them as well. Uh, Skeleton Sentinel. I, I think we don't. <laughs> sure, it'll go down to three energy. You could ramp it out um, a little bit sooner, but I, I don't think that's going to matter. Uh, but I think if any of these other three tanks hit the board ahead of schedule by one or two turns, um, that's going to make this archetype I think pretty real. So. 
I think Engine Seer and Full Throttle already doing a huge amount of work. I put High Command in here because, uh, again, this is kind of leaning into the idea that uh, you could have a high roll start where you've got double Full Throttle and High Command and be able to drop, you know, uh, an, an immense tank for a lot less and then play other things, right? So High Command just kind of plays well with the tanks because they come down later. And so being able to refill your energy, take advantage of Full Throttle, ramping you one. Um, essentially, uh, we might see some pretty scary vehicles. The more, the more I'm kind of talking about it, even myself, because honestly, just wanted to uh, hop on this video and talk about it. Um, I really think that vehicles is probably going to have a, the, the support that it needs to operate. Um, you know, the high rolls are going to be high. I hope that that's not every game. It'd be kind of crazy if it were. But I think we're we're definitely seeing some support. Um, Tech Priest is going to be an important piece of that, full throttle as well. And I guess then we'll just see kind of how removal matches up, how some of the flankers match up. Um, but I think we know that tanks with armor have been really a problem in the game with Predator Annihilator um, and Robothorn Tank having Vanguard. Armor 2 coming down. If that comes down, you know, uh, for potentially 7 energy, 8 energy. Uh, it's just not hard to envision it being a huge problem facing down all these tanks so that is kind of my thoughts on the vehicles which i i are looking they're shaping up i feel like they're looking to be pretty solid um so let's take a look at infantry so i would say on the opposite end of the spectrum we start with vehicles which i think are more top heavy in terms of the energy cost in terms of needing a bit more help to kind of make them fast enough um to be able to you know effectively play in the meta it looks like infantry are much more skewed around kind of like cheaper value units right um you know even just kind of starting with the, the Cadian medic which we were talking about earlier from regiment 223 right it's gonna get killed by swarm lord um or you know imitech or something like that but really you're just playing this as like a kind of a cheap unit that has a little bit more value to it uh, same with Kazarkin, which which looks to be pretty decent. Deal one damage to a random enemy. If it dies, draw a card, right? This would be better, probably, if it said um, troop, because I think enemy still includes the warlord. So it's awkward that you you may ping the warlord instead of a unit that's at one, and then you don't draw a card. Um, so that's, that's a little unfortunate. Uh, Flavor Trooper, um, we're going to talk about a card later that makes this interesting. Um, cheap has a good duty ability two to three damage to all enemies give this thing flank comes in you know later in the game uh it's also got blast one itself definitely a lot of blast kind of thrown around in the last two faction releases with uh the gene stealers and uh for the imperial guard when they're not going to have like like a lot of particular aoe removal um it seems like kind of eg's design philosophy is like Let's just put Blast on more things, so if they in fact live, um, then you're going to get that ability to kind of like catch back up. And then Commissar has a really interesting ability. Um, whenever you're triggering duty, give Armor 1. So it actually allows for some of your probably cheaper troops um, that get flank or have the ability to use, survive to do duty to kind of stick on the board, right? I, I feel like, although his stats, you know, he's, he's very clearable himself, um, if you're giving something else armor, you know, pretty reliably and getting a benefit from that, maybe even to the point that you can heal this or like protect the commissar, um, then that's going to be pretty good. So infantry are definitely skewing more aggro oriented, I would say. They're kind of cheaper. They've got like little pieces of value, but like nothing, I would say, incredibly powerful. Feels like the infantry have more of like interesting synergies that that might kind of add up to something powerful whereas i think the tanks have a lot of inherent power and it's more about like how soon can i uh, play these cards right um so infantry or yeah i mean they're more my style i like playing more aggro stuff i like playing these little little troops that have a little bit of value synergize with each other well um it's i, I feel like i have more of a question mark on infantry as to like how good um how strong they will be but let's look at some of the support. Um, or before we even get there, my bad. Uh, can't forget the ogres here. Um, and for those who get this reference, amazing. Um, so these were the ogren that were uh, 
re revealed today, which is super exciting because I was hoping we were going to see them. So there's the Ogren three, and and they're all infantry, right? So that's that's why we're also going to talk about them. Um, we get a three drop Vanguard unit that is just one of the better three drop Vanguard units we've had, right? So there's um, the three drop Vanguard in Necrons. That's a three three four. This is a four three four. Um, and we've had other ones that are 3-3-3. The fact that this has 4 health, 3 energy, Vanguard is going to make this good. I think this is an early game uh, unit that uh, punches a little bit above its weight. It has a little bit more survivability. It lets you set up. Um, I think that's that's going to be really nice. Um, I, I just expect that we'll see this. And it will benefit also from like potentially the heal off Regiment. Right? You've got more health to work with. Um, so that unit's looking pretty solid. Five drop, uh, the Bogren. I, I love this guy. I feel like he's like a hipster old ogre man with his his cool facial hair. Um, and he's, he's older and he's got this big gun. Love it. Um, I, I don't know how good this guy will be. So it's five energy uh, for five health, one armor, right? We're kind of thinking Lich Guard in terms of like the cost and having a little bit of armor. Its attack stats are great. Um, it's also got Blast 2. So what's what's nice about this card is that if your opponent does not have a six melee flanker, right? We're thinking definitely about tempo. Then this thing not only like maybe soaks an attack or soaks a couple attacks because they have to chip away at it. It then fires back really well. Um, like these these are sort of the 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 beefy infantry units I was looking for. Makes sense that they're saving the beef for the ogren. Um, because the counterparts from over here are looking pretty kind of weak, um, low on health, uh, have like a little bit of value, but nothing too flashy. I feel like just in terms of stats, these guys are looking really nice. And then we have a legendary Ogren that was revealed today. Six energy, six health, one armor. All of these have Vanguard. Um, and it has the Talent Renowned Bodyguard, uh, which is give your warlord invulnerable until the next turn for one energy. Could have could have thrown it up here, but um, I really just wanted to talk more about like them as infantry, less less about the spell. Because also we don't want to act like we're going to guarantee getting that spell. But six energy, six health, one armor is really beefy. We've got quite a few six melee flankers, um, so you're going to have to trade that fully into this because it has seven melee attack. It's just killing all of those. Veteran Stormboy, uh, the Zephyr coming out of the Sisters of Battle. And then you're going to have to attack with your Warlord or ping it with something or whatever else to get that last bit of health off. Um, and then, if it doesn't die, you're getting just this great value. Um, I just think as a 6-drop, unless there's something really, really important to be doing, this feels like a great slot. Um, potentially in a vehicle deck right because you can kind of drop this down soak some pressure maybe even get a little advantage on your warlord and then go into your late game um where you've had this vanguard threat that they have to deal with and unless they've got maybe hard removal it's going to take multiple attacks and a bit of work to get get past this mr nork um and then you get to play your tanks so uh th these guys are all looking pretty beefy pretty problematic very like well statted for vanguard units that you know uh, there's been a lot of vanguard units that usually have a downside you know where they're soft to one type of attack and they're they're not really uh there's basically like a plus or minus one split um on two of these and then minus two on the nork but the these are just looking really good so i think you know if we think about curve right you can go you know katie and medic early you can go flamer trooper or the kazarkin you're probably not going to do that because they, they just will be cleared pretty easily. But if you go like Medic into into Ogryn, into like, you know, I don't know, maybe Commissar or something else, into Bolgrin, into Nork, into Tanks or something, that that seems pretty scary. Um, and, I, and I imagine we'll see more Ogryn too because we, we still have plenty of reveals to go. Um, but these guys are looking pretty scary. This feels like it's really starting to lean into kind of a beefier stat stick, uh, like aggro-y sort of strategy. But they also, because they have Vanguard, play really well with maybe protecting certain in important pieces like the Tech Priest um, and and sort of like shaking hands and, and welcoming in your, your tank regiments. 
um, you know, in the late game. So I think Ogrens are, are looking really, really uh, just kind of inherently powerful so far. And then they just have like the synergy of they help set you up in the late game. If you draw them late too, right, it is still kind of a beefy uh, Vanguard threat that you have to kill to get to the enemy Warlord or get to their other units. So um, I, I think they're shaping up really, really nicely. So let's now talk about the infantry support. So obviously we've got Commissar Dankler being like the infantry Warlord, right? So the fact that he has a talent that can recharge duty abilities and give health and the fact that he himself gives infantry uh, flank on his duty ability is is just incredible right flank in your 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 dead dog set that up right mr nork um i think mr nork is better uh it or you could do it on your bonehead or uh the ogren itself right just giving any of those beefy guys flank is just really really nice um so that's that's a good piece of support definitely it seems like quite a bit of the infantry units are going to have duty abilities we do have a tank with a duty ability the vanquisher um and so there is support. I will say these cards tend to be not so good. Same with Regimental Doctrine. Um, where it's like, again, you have to have stuff on the board. Kind of have to be winning the board already. So it's almost like a win more card. Um, but we'll see. Maybe the duty abilities will make this worth it. So reload the duty of all units. So that includes vehicles. So maybe you do want to have like one copy of Press the Attack. To, uh, you know, kind of like push forward your advantage. But obviously on a, an equal board state, uh, in terms of not having that many units, um, yeah, this card's just, generally, they're, they're not as good. Um, so I, I think there's still a bit of a question mark there. Regiment Doctrine, same thing. Heal two to all your units. Okay, you're paying three energy baseline to heal your Warlord for two. Um, and then if they're, again, things have to be on the board to get the Regiment abilities. We haven't seen any Regiment abilities that are that crazy besides... Um, the regular tank, which is two damage to a random enemy. Um, so I, I'm pretty skeptical, I would say, on these two cards as to how much of a staple they will be. I'm very certain that Commissar Dankler will just be uh, kind of a go-to for infantry synergies. It's, it's very, very clear what he's trying to do. Um, but we did get a new stratagem today in Thunderous Charge that, that offers something interesting. So two energy, give plus two, plus two which I would say in general does not matter, right? Um, it is permanent, um, and it is to a friendly troop, so this is not going on your Warlord permanently, obviously. Um, generally, this has not mattered because troops don't stick around that long. That's just kind of like how the game tends to play out. But there's something very interesting here. Concussive, right? And immediately what I thought about is Blast. So if you don't know, and, and this is something I literally did not know until fairly recently with Gordrang, who used to have Concussive on his ability, if you give a unit that has Concussive, or sorry, if you give a unit that has Blast Concussive, or vice versa, when it attacks, and we're pretty sure this is on attack, we're not 100%, um, and I'll explain about that in a second, uh, the Blast hits multiple targets, and so does the Concussion. So let's say they even have a Vanguard unit, another unit, and their Warlord. You hit that Vanguard unit with your, uh, your initial attack, blasts out to the other two. The Concussive applies to everything, right? So uh, Thunderous Charge is an interesting... I don't know if this card's going to see play, to be honest. Obviously, it's only for troop. It's not going to be for vehicles. But we've seen multiple troops with Blast. So it, it, there's, there's kind of this clear connection to how thunderous charge could be useful it does require setup but i think if you've got a good you know i don't know like probably six to eight troops with blast thunderous charge probably does a decent impression of like stunning their board you know or ccing them and allowing for you to kind of like reset and recharge um, it's pretty cheap at two energy, so then you can play like another troop and maybe get some of your regiment duty stuff going. Um, I'm just, I'm really intrigued because we've already seen uh, an Ogren with Blast. Uh, we also have the Flame Trooper with Blast. The real question is when a duty ability like the Flame Trooper says, deal two to three damage to all enemies, will that concuss as well? My initial thought was that concussion and the way that I thought it interacted was that you have to make an attack 
And then if you have the option to AOE, that will apply the concussion. Concussion technically says when that unit, or uh, yeah, I think it's when that unit deals damage. So technically, if you look at the wording for Flamer, right, two to three damage to all enemies, it's coming from this source. Duty does not count as an attack, though. It is basically a third, or it's a second option to attacking with ranged melee. You can choose duty instead if you have legal attack targets and use the ability. So there, there is definitely a bonus to Thunderous Charge if this includes duty abilities that are dealing damage to multiple sources. There's also the um, Manticore that does that on six energy, um, deals two to four damage to, um, I think it's all troops or all enemy enemy troops or enemy units. Um, so you could Thunderous Charge uh, that. So yeah, because Friendly Troop, yeah, fr no, Friendly Troop does include vehicles. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because there's, there's Troop, there, there's Unit, Right, okay. So you, you could use this on Manticore. Um, maybe maybe I'm wrong. And maybe it only applies to, to um, the the actual infantry units. But I think if it did, it would just say infantry. So I'm pretty sure this applies to vehicles as well. So Thunderous Charge is interesting. Um, I don't know if that synergy is going to be enough uh, in terms of infantry, infantry support. I feel like just on paper, there's more vehicle support so far that we've seen. Um, but I imagine, you know, I mean, it's the guard. There has to be, you know, uh, quite a few worthwhile things to be playing infantry with. So far, in terms of the support cards, I feel like they are more win more oriented. They're not just kind of like powerful or good on an even board state or a board state where you're behind. Um, but clearly with things like uh, Commissar, Dankler, there's like a lot that you can be doing. Uh, and even between these these beefy, beefy boys, or even some of the, the little smaller synergies with infantry, um, I still think that there, there's quite a lot of, you know, little pieces that come together and maybe add up into something powerful. Right now, I will say, I think the vehicles are looking a little scarier, but we've got so many cards that we haven't seen. Um, so, yeah, kind of, this is really, we've seen, like, obviously a handful more cards but i think most of what we've seen revolves around like what is the inventory doing what are the vehicles doing what's the support for both of them um and so far i think sh things are shaping up for I i'm not getting this impression that guard are going to be like op um that's that's not what i've seen so far but i also don't think they're going to be weak i i think they are maybe going to be more towards this kind of gene stealer thing where hopefully not like infest infestation which was a problem on release um, but more around like value there are these synergies you can take advantage of maybe you can really mess with the deck building as well um, and then maybe a real high roll vehicle uh, synergy so uh, time will tell we got a lot a lot to, to get through um, and on Thursday uh, definitely check out our podcast it's called card talk uh, I'm sure you can find it through my channel. We have a separate playlist for that podcast. Um, Harry and I will basically be going over uh, cards that uh, are exciting, that we're interested in, maybe ones to look out for. We're going to change it up. We're not going to review every single card. That's definitely way too much. Uh, three hours of doing that last time was was killing, killing me, certainly. Um, so I think we're going to change up the format. Excited to see what you guys think. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments of just how things are shaping up. Um, and uh, yeah, if you feel like I'm missing anything or if you're excited for anything in particular, I'd love to hear about it. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you guys next time, which should be Thursday. And then after this weekend, because I'm pretty busy, uh, we'll get back to streams and other things, other fun uh, Imperial Guard related matters, I'm sure. So uh, take care and I'll catch you next time.